Um, if you could tell us, I guess, a bit about your family now. I know you have three kids. If you could tell us yeah. a bit about them, their interests, stuff like that. Yeah, so I, I do have three kids. Uh, so the oldest one is Timothy, he's 12 years old. Elisha is nine and Mila is three years old. So two boys and a girl. Uh, yeah, they very, um, uh, you know, children uh, that are very active and they uh, like to, to make fun and uh, run around and always uh, try to avoid homework or uh, uh, chores and uh, do just at home, things to do at home. So um, like just like ordinary kids. But my oldest kid, uh, Timothy, he likes to play saxophone. He studies in the music school. Elisha plays violin and Mila she just plays her dolls for right now. So she's a small girl. <laughs> right, right. Um, both of your boys uh, uh, play hockey, right? Yeah, they used to. Actually, they don't play now because uh, my oldest one, he, he actually was playing for five years. Uh, ice hockey class since he was five years old to, till he was 10. And then one day he just, you know, burned out. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. how they train, uh, you know, uh, Russian kids is really crazy you will have like six days a week uh, trainings including Sundays and, mm -hmm. uh, at one point it was we just realized we spent like all our lives taking him to this ice hockey classes and different events and games and it was just too overwhelming for us and eventually Tim himself said like I, I just burned out and I don't want to do it anymore so he's now doing swimming so he still do some sports but not like you know, most of his time as before. Uh, and Elijah also did uh, hockey, ice hockey for two years. But uh, mm -hmm. now he's, uh, um, he also tried uh, soccer. And, and so we are kind of like on the crossroads right now, mm -hmm. what to do. Oh, so man, all these sports and stuff, this must be really expensive for you. Uh, actually, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, 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 those, um, Sports are uh, organized and run by the government, so we don't really pay for the sports. Uh, but we buy just the gear, especially like with the ice hockey, you buy the gear, the skates, and the government provides you uh, like an ice time plus the salary for the coach. So we don't really pay. Uh, maybe, I don't know, 10 or $20 a month, which is wow. like really small yeah. amount. But again, there's like a competition among the kids because they sort of because you don't pay they try to select the best kids and those who don't play or perform well they sort of put them on a hold or eventually they will say sorry you can't you know be part of the team and so the parents will go to like a private school and then they will pay a lot of money uh, mm. for their kid to play mm. yeah. So this is like all sports. I mean, uh, we've seen like the videos of uh, gymnastics and uh, uh, these places that the kids live in. This is all paid for by the government. Yeah, most of the of the sports are paid by the government. We also do have private schools, mm -hmm. and uh, our parents they pay a lot of money if they want to. Especially like Moscow and Saint Petersburg, uh, their parents pay a lot of money just to like I guess here where. If you want your kid to have the results, you have to invest and do a lot of practice. And sometimes it does get very crazy with kids and with families. They just really so obsessed about the, their kid being a number one, uh, you know, in the in the sport that he's doing or she's doing. So, uh, yeah. Okay, unscripted qu question. Um, your English is excellent. Um, okay, I am assuming that in the Soviet Union, they did not teach you English. So could you tell us a bit about how? Yeah, I do have an accent as you hear. Uh, I, I try to uh, practice more in Russia. We don't really speak English, so that's a challenge. While I'm here in Dallas, I could just practice a little bit of English. So this is so good for me. Uh, but yeah, we do. Um, learn English at school uh, from the second grade. Oh, really? Yeah, so everybody actually uh, does study English. Um, but, you know, when you're forced to learn, you sometimes don't want to learn. Uh, mm -hmm. And you sort of, 
uh, hate it. And so many uh, kids in Russia, they hate English just because they don't see a practical application. They don't travel, they don't have English friends. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so they don't know why they have to learn it. But as they grow up, they realize they need it. They start learning it. And so there's like a big trend right now in Russia that everybody is trying to learn. And, and we see it as a missionary opportunities to, to bring teams from, uh, you know, other countries and do English camps and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, connect with the students who want to speak with native speakers. Mm -hmm. And that's so important. As for me personally, I had a chance to go to South Africa for one year. So that was sort of like a, a point in my life where you had I had the conditions that I was forced to speak. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're forced to speak, you right. actually um, learn how to speak much faster <laughs> and uh, you want to express yourself and understand the culture, the jokes, the life and be part of that particular culture. So. And so that's uh, how I learned the language. And of course, it's uh, traveling to the United States and speaking with William and other mm -hmm. friends was just so helpful. Yeah. To learn. You know, it's funny. The first time I met Vitaly, um, he was always asking me, well, how do you say this in English or how do you say that? And I'm like, well, that works. And he's like, but what's the proper English? And I'm like, your English is better than mine. Um, <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's kind of weird, but it, it seems that people who study English as a second language, they know all of the rules and stuff like that. Whereas those of us who are native speakers, we just kind of fumble through it. So um, very, very often I've noticed when you find people who speak English as a second language, a lot of times their English is actually better than a native English speaker. So, uh, I guess tell us um, a, a bit about uh, your missionary work and um, uh, you, you mentioned a little bit about it, but um, can you tell us a bit more about like your internet ministries? And yeah. yeah, I do involve in several things. One of the things I'm so excited about is that website called mirstudentop.com. And as I look at it now and compare it with other websites, we're number one evangelical Christian website in Russia. So we had 1.4 million visits and 47,000 people said that they prayed and asked Jesus in their life. So that is so, uh, you know, uplifting and amazing to see. And uh, about 8,000 total number of people who actually subscribed for the follow-up. So that just, you know, uh, amazes me to see how God is at work and how uh, hungry, uh, how spiritually people um, uh, are looking for God and want to connect with God and ask those questions in the search. Uh, but um, one of the things I also do, I go to the orphanages and uh, try to connect with the orphans and do the Bible lessons. And that's been more like a personal connection with people and see how God is also at work and he wants to tell them something and wants to take care about them as well. And uh, and one of other things that I'm involved with is, is uh, joining uh, teams um, of Russian guys that travel to Mongolia. And our, our goal is to train Mongolians to do the missionary in Mongolia and train them how to do the camps and youth ministry. And um, we go to the five cities of the Western Mongolia and it's amazing what God has done um, over the years, it's been 10 years now and it's just, you know, mm. exciting for me. Wow. So this obviously brings up a question. What is your source of income? Yeah, well, it's a good question. Uh, I have to raise my own support and, and that's um, always a challenge uh, and always a walk by faith that God will take care of your needs, especially if you have a family of three kids. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, over the years we had difficult times and we had great times we had times where we really uh, needed the money for something and there were times where we had enough so uh, yeah but God was always uh, taking care of us and you know um, that was uh, just a journey of faith and trusting the Lord so and so so a hundred percent of your income comes from donations right yes so we were gonna 
put up a link to Vitaly's website on the screen. It's also going to be down um, in the description. Uh, those of you listening via audio, uh, if you'll look down in the description, I'll have a link to Vitaly's website. Um, it'll give you links to where you can donate and stuff like that. Um, there's definitely a lot more I could ask you, but Vitaly has another appointment, so we uh, need to wrap this up. But uh, man, it's been great seeing you. Uh, it was nice seeing you. Yeah. I appreciate uh, yeah. talking to you guys and yeah. just connecting a little bit. Yeah. So thanks for being on the show. So, thank you. Uh, thank you. You know what? Come here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank it's you. It's nice to be here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. That's all the time we have for Modern Faith Unlimited today. So bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>